the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution namaste let me begin by wishing you all a happy day well i'm so happy that we are staying connected even in these days of pandemic i am aparna cj an ex student of bss gurugulu in jade a different school without beating around the bush let me come right away to the precedence of this day july 26th on this date in 1999 india successfully took command of the high outpost which was lost to pakistan yes kargil vijay divas operation vijay is one of the most prominent wars and the hard fought victory by indian armed force which lasted for about 60 long days every indian commemorates the valiance of soldiers and honor the brave war heroes who fought the toughest battle of their lives victory was inscribed in the peace of kargil 21 years ago and it will still continue to inspire generations on this special day we are privileged to have a session with colonel dpk pillai sir colonel dpk pillai is a hero who is never off duty he got severely wounded in a counter insurgency operation but this did not pull him back from saving the lives of two children he then changed the face of a remote village in manipur by delivering developmental and humanitarian activities after his journey back to the place where he got wounded he set us all a legendary example and was decorated with shaurya chakra which is an award for valiance and activities of courage and self sacrifice namaste sir hope you are doing great on behalf of whole gurugulam family i wish you kargil vijay divas happy day of victory sir it is a great honor for us to have a session with you On this day it is a pleasure for us if you could please share your experience with Indian Armed Forces and how did you feel while leading a life which was solely dedicated for our motherland This question about my journey in the army and uh, my service to the motherland Firstly my journey in the army was already preordained in the sense that my father in that chenum and apo penum ആർമിയിൽ തന്നെയായിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ ആർമിയിൽ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ ഒരു നാച്ചുറൽ ചോയ്സ് ആയിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ ഐ ഡിസൈഡഡ് ഇൻ ആസ് എ യങ് സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് ബോയ് ഐ ജോയിൻ ദ നാഷണൽ ഡിഫൻസ് അക്കാഡമി ഖഡക് വാസിലിൽ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഫോർ മീ ഇറ്റ് ജോയിൻ ദ നാഷണൽ ഡിഫൻസ് അക്കാഡമി ഫോർ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യത്തിൻ്റെ എല്ലാ ഭാഗത്തുനിന്നുള്ള ആൾക്കാരെയും ഞാൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് വി ഗോട്ട് ഇൻ ടു എ ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ അക്കാഡമി വിച്ച് ഇസ് സ്പ്രെഡ് ഓവർ എയ്റ്റ് തൗസൻഡ് ഏക്കോസ് ഓഫ് ലാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാഡ് മാസിവ് ബിൽഡിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ഐ ഫെൽ ദ പവർ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ഇൻ ദ സെൻസ് വെൻ ഐ വെൻ്റ് ദർ you know where it got everybody together and we were all had you know put together in one and then we were all grouped into squadrons we were trained young boys you know mission bolum virundittilarnu but then we came there then we learned to live together eat together fight together run together play together you know and it was like and we united we were united in our mission and so one of the first things that we learned there was to understand that it didn't matter how fast i ran the 100 meters or how fast i could uh, go for 40 kilometers alone it mattered how much i could take along my other people and that is where the seeds of leadership were laid in us that we were not good as individuals we were as good as the team that we belong to whether it's a platoon or it's a squadron or a company or a battalion and i think that comes on to our country that if you think about it how good you are doesn't really matter if you don't fit into a part of a <laughs> so you may be a very rich son but if you are not looking after your parents or you are not of any use to your family or to your village or to your uh, countrymen you know use of that wealth so i think that is a basic one and second thing that we learned in the academy was um, you know we got to explore our limits to know our own uh, uh, abilities and i think uh, 
the thing is about you know pushing us to the limits uh, we used to climb mountains i never climbed any mountains but used to climb that and that's to reclimb it because you know we went didn't do it in a particular time so they said no you got to do it all over again so life like every time one horizon was reached there was a new horizon which we had to conquer so there was never a static it is just like in kargil war peak after peak so we never gave up there were people willing to fight again and again and again because in our us in our hearts there was a fire burning and if you ask me what is this uh, service to my motherland it is wrong to think of it as a service to motherland it's a voluntary service and i willingly give my service to the country because i want to do so i love my country and my countrymen and i think i didn't join the army to kill people uh, shoot and you know be a trigger happy i'm not a murderer i'm not a killer i'm a savior i was there because there are people who can't take weapons on their behalf i've taken weapons to train and to defend my country and i didn't want to kill those people who were there i wanted to get them to understand that you know this idea will prevail and that is we are on a right your side we are the country with dharma on our side i wanted to work on that and i and many of us like our soldiers we've always upheld what is right yes we liberated a country called bangladesh because the pakistanis were killing them killing their own brethren their own religion core religion is islamic people just because they were bengalis and the burden came on to our country and my father fought in the war we upheld the privileges and rights and liberties of those people we liberated a new country and we didn't stay back there and conquer them though we conquered them we could have controlled the country we handed it over to those people they walked away so even here in kargil we didn't we've said that you don't let don't trouble us because if you trouble us we're going to trouble you no end and we'll finish you and that's what we've done and the army is about being in that so the military the armed forces is about that we we bear arms to protect our people because we love them and the, that is also like if you ask a lot of people ask me how could you not evacuate yourself when you got four bullets in your chest when i saw those two children who were wounded you know and when i saw those people who were surrendered i realized that i had taken an oath to protect my country and my countrymen and also to uh, uphold all that is valuable in this country and now what is valuable the freedom and liberty of all people in my country are as valuable as my own freedom in my life so for me to trade my life with that child okay let that child die because he is a naga child it's not acceptable for me the moral equivalence of my own life and that child was the same so i said when i saw that child i saw myself as a child in kerala or it could be my own family and i said i am not going if it was my own nephew or niece i wouldn't have allowed myself to go away i wouldn't have abandoned the child and gone away i would have made sure so i said the child goes first and uh, that's the scene from my encounter where i was waiting and i gave this order because i don't covet any wealth a soldier doesn't covet wealth or it doesn't he doesn't we don't get a great salary but i think the honor the love and the affection that we get of our people that no amount of money can buy and that is what made me join so it's not a sacrifice it is a journey that i really enjoyed when i retired the honor that i got the love i get from my countrymen i don't think any other profession could have given me what i've enjoyed here so it's not been a sacrifice it has been a duty which i've enjoyed doing and it is something like a son would do to his parents something that you know i as a child of this country as a citizen of this country owed it to my country and i did it that was heart touching and inspiring so vision 2020 was a dream plan and project of dr apj abdul kalam sir to transform our nation into a developed country at this juncture where are we are we on the right track of fulfilling the dreams abdul kalam inspires us you know not just the fact that he came from a very obscure village from south india in tamil nadu and rose to the highest uh, constitutional position that we can imagine and his vision which uh, you know firstly that means this man had a vision where he wanted to go when he was a child he knew what he wanted to do and he reached what what he what he aimed for now when he wrote this vision 2020 document which covers a large number of fields from agriculture economy to you know to elimination of terrorism and elimination of fear now this is something that every indian should aspire for and if you look at it Two countries became independent in 1947, India and Pakistan. See where Pakistan is today and where we are today. So the fact remains that our ancestors fought for something which was valuable, and they worked hard to preserve it and to improve on it. While we may not have reached where Abdul Kalam may wanted to have reached, what what is important for us to understand is that 
just not in 2020, in our lifetimes, our actions should all be geared towards making not only ourselves, progressing ourselves like Abdul Kalam had progressed himself from a village to the president's office and overseeing in between the integrated missile development program. The whole world had put sanctions against us and he created this uh, missile technology which is amongst the best. So he had the vision. So it's not only about personal development, but he also contributed to his, uh, to his uh, environment, to his country. And that is what our aim should be. Our aim should be to deliver something, not only improve us, and our true development will come, true vision, not only of Abdul Kalam, but all our ancestors will come when we progress not only as individuals, but as communities, as a nation, and as a community, the whole world as a community. Because it's believed in the ancient Indian philosophy that the whole world is one family. Say Vashtam by Tumbukon. Hope we will reach the apex very soon with unified efforts. Now the contemporary scenario has got us all into a battlefield where we are all warriors fighting against an unseen, invisible opponent, coronavirus. So what advice do you have to the public to curb out the outbreak and to fight back courageously like superheroes? Coronavirus that has uh, inflicted the whole world is uh, something that has taken the whole world by storm. And, uh, it's not possible for us to, you know, continue with our lives the way we would want to in the previous days. Like, you know, and it has actually helped us pause and uh, wonder where are we headed. So in a way, it's good. Corona has uh, put the old world order into disarray. We have uh, a lot of issues that have come up. We have had time. We had this lockdown. And we had this triple lockdown, then we had you know, social distancing. These are norms that should be, you know, it was getting a very, very hectic life. We were moving left, right and centre everywhere, you know. Now this is, uh, with the age of technology, we are capable of doing much more with the help of technology. We are able to reach out to people without having to travel. We are able to reduce our carbon footprint. You see how quickly the world, the nature rejuvenated itself when the lockdown happened, the pollution levels came down. And uh, we were able to do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, catching up to uh, carry out an introspection. I think what is important is while the disease will be fought at the level of the government and the WHO and the, you know, the countries and our systems that are there, what we, you and I, can do is actually not contribute to make uh, the place more chaotic. We need to collaborate with the government and all the projects that they have. We need to uh, cooperate with them on what they are asking us to do. We must uh, also help us, you know, uh, create community awareness about how this disease uh, can actually, you know, change our lives and bring about the change and adapt to the change that is now thrust on us. And uh, even before, even after the, the disease is actually cured, we need to understand, uh, continue to do, build on, uh, you know, how technology can serve us better. We don't have to do things the old way. We can do new things, you know, and do it in a new way and uh, yet achieve much better results. So that's what we should be aiming for now. Uh, yes, sir. Even though the revival seems to be bleak, let us all faithfully wait for a glimmer of hope. As border tensions are flaring up, it is adding fuel to the fire and sending shock and horror waves among us citizens. What do you think, sir? Where are we as far as the world economy is considered? This Wuhan virus, the virus that emanated from uh, China, has actually put a spanner in the box in the world economy. There's no doubt about it. We don't know whether it was engineered by the Chinese as a deliberate uh, biological weapon or not. But nonetheless, it has given us time to actually regroup our forces. It's given us a pause in the battle when the momentum is lost and new elements are added. It actually, you know, everyone sits down together and they really understand what it is uh, and how do we tackle this animal. And that's what we've got this opportunity. The economy, the old economy is really challenged and uh, we are having problems in, uh, you know, in, in uh, a lot of issues. You know, uh, there's new norms that have come in about, you know, social distancing and our ability to mingle with people. These are all in come in for a lot of, uh, you know, you can't work. We can't continue to work the same way. And even the world over, they've realized that there is a lot of resentment against the Chinese for whatever they have been aiming at. 
and uh, rightfully so because I feel that what they did is not correct. They kept the virus concealed from us for a long time and it's known that it has emanated from a lab where they were researching when very clearly the 1972 Convention on Biological and Chemical Weapons prevents us from actually working on such weapons of mass destruction, you know, weapons of chemical or biological by nature. We are banned from doing, but then this is an unethical thing that they've done. And in our, uh, what we've seen as a country when, when we had, you know, if you see the way we've actually regrouped and uh, we have now been able to deliver on our requirements, it shows, uh, you know, we have been going back to the basic. Gandhiji always used to say that the country lives in villages and that's what it, this has proved. Now we are going local. There's a lot of uh, uh, voices that asking us to go local. And that was what Gandhiji's campaign was all about, about republics emanating from the villages that we are living in and, you know, and uh, where we become lead self-sustained lives. And that Atman Nirbhar Bharat that is there. So you develop the requirements that are there. And we've done it in the past. We are under sanctions for the computers, supercomputers. We were under sanctions for, you know, the missile programs. And we had people who rose to that occasion and delivered it. And even in the armed forces, we, uh, in 71, it was all alone. We were alone against an uh, array of European powers led by America. We had the Pakistanis and a hostile Chinese. And yet we were capable of delivering what we needed to deliver in the name of justice. So we've done that. So this country can actually, we need to get together and understand where we all, our strengths lie and uh, work on improving those, uh, build on our strengths and build on our weaknesses. Uh, it is crystal clear that the students are longing to get back to their schools. What should be their mindset right now and what message do you have to the most powerful youth of our nation to attain Vision 2020? To the last question, we are the world's youngest nation. Our youth bulge, you know, it's, it's the youngest country and we have the world's largest number of young population. and. It's an opportunity for this country to realize its potential, the potential of the youth. The youth are the ones who are going to lead this country, who is going to see this transition from, from a developing country to a developed one, a country that is, you know, from torn between a lot of requirements, uh, you know, with violence, with the you know, unsettled borders and issues of communal issues and everything, to a country that is really mature. And that depends on the young of India and you are the generation that is going to make it happen who are the one generation who are going to enjoy the fruits of this uh, this transition. So what we expect you is to firstly remember the sacrifices of your ancestors who made this independence possible, who worked hard to build this country, to give us you know system that we in 1947, after years of slavery, came and became a country on its own strength. We had our own constitution. Build on that. Build on those fundamental human principles and realize that you know our country has to it's like an example for the rest of the world to understand how much how different people can actually contribute and collaborate to make a country great and that's what we are we are on the throes of a takeoff and i wish that your generation on your shoulders it rests you know and you should be able to just take off and carry this country into the future you know when you meet with europeans when you meet with americans when you meet with the chinese or the orientals and you meet with Anywhere, you must ease the equals. You must meet them as understanding that, yeah, we are as good, if not better than you in anything that we do. You know, we, we do things with honesty, with integrity. And it should not be like, oh, this is a Chinese product, it's going to last for two days. They should say that, oh, this is an Indian product. It's amazing, it's going to last for a long time. Oh, that's an Indian guy who's going to work for us. That man epitomizes honesty, integrity, you can trust him with anything. That is what a true Indian will be. When you go abroad, when you're working with people, when your equipment or your stories or your or your products go abroad, it should just be said, oh, it's an Indian thing, so we can just take it blindfolded. We shouldn't have a, you know, a kind of a thing. I think that is the key. Build your character to do things honestly, sincerely, and whatever you do, leave a mark, you know, and honesty. You should not leave a mark as a thief, as a cheat, but as a man who set the standard high and attained it. A man who could dream high, you know, people as a country, we dreamt of uh, lofty ideals of equality for all, democracy for all, and we've attained it. We've proved it for the last 70 years. It's now on you to live up to those ideals. It's now on you to deliver that country that is an ancient country that has 
produced, you know, mathematical geniuses, understood astrology, astronomy, you know, everything that is there owes its origin to Hengen. Things. So we got to regain that ancient glory and do those things. Vasco de Gama didn't come to India to teach us Portuguese. He came here because he came looking for India because and the Americans were discovered thinking it was India because they were looking for the world's greatest country and that was India. And that's the responsibility of you all. Make this country great once again. Thank you. Uh, yes, as it is said that every dry day night has a shiny and bright morning in its folds. So for sure, a bright future is waiting and let's hope that everything will get back to normalcy very soon. I want to wish uh, BSS Gurukulam and uh, its principal, its staff and its lovely children a very, very happy uh, you know, 50th anniversary celebrations. And it is the school that lays the foundations to a great character. And you all have to learn from your school. And you all have to learn from your 50 years to celebrate your school. This is a value. It's a rare thing. And especially during Corona, our school has been doing so well. And I'm really happy to hear by, you know, just I'm also infected by the enthusiasm that your teachers have and in trying to contact and uh, keep in touch. And so I wish you all very best and I am looking forward to hearing great stories and great heroes and heroines coming out of the school. Thank you and God bless. It takes more than blood and sweat to love one's country like a soldier. As it is rightly quoted that I am a soldier, I have two mothers, one thinks about me but I think about the other. Thank you so much for being with us sir. once again. On behalf of Gurugulam family, I wholeheartedly thank you for your golden words and for spending time with us. Thank you so much sir. It is high time that we instill an emotion that the letter I in India is me. I am India and India is in me. Yes, India is in all of us. Let us once again salute all our brave war heroes who made the supreme sacrifice of their lives for our country and for all of us. Let us seek inspiration from them for striving for our country and for building up an India of our dreams. Jai Hind!